You know the difference between many churches today. As many churches are full of people wanting to make decisions. But I truly believe what the church needs is devoted followers of Christ. If a church is fully devoted to Christ, they're all in. They have decided that uh, they have chosen Jesus and following after Him more than the comfortability of life or more than just happiness. The term all in is a Texas Hold'em term. Anybody ever play Texas Hold'em? I'm not going to kick you out of church. You can, you can be honest. We're, we're stretching the verb a little bit, and we gave you chips out here, and those chips you can't take to the Texas Star Casino and chip me in for 100 bucks. That's not going to work. But we've all, in our terminology, understand what the word all in is. It means that my decision that I have, the hand that I have in front of me, I believe will beat any other hand. I believe what God has given to me is better than what anybody else can give to me. To risk everything on a venture that one thinks to be successful. To be absolutely certain and have no doubt that when I play my hand, I will win. See, we can use that terminology in Texas Hold'em because it is a game. But I want to let you know that the terminology of all in in Christ is not a game. It is a reality. And I believe so many times churches are so dead because they want to play a game. They want to attend church, but they do not want to be devoted to Christ in their relationship. See, when you have a good hand, a, a, a four of a kind or four aces or a royal plus, you want to look at that and you say, I'm going to win because circumstances have given you a good hand. What I wanted you to know, though, that Jesus Christ has given us a circumstance that we can go all in and win. Today, I'm going old school on you. Can I go some old school? Old school means I don't care if I hurt your feelings. I don't care if I step on your toes. What I care about is giving to you the truth of God's Word. No more complacency. No more playing the game of church. No more just having a good time. But we, as the body of Christ, need to be devoted followers of Jesus Christ. The outside world is wondering why the church has no impact. It's because the church is playing the game of Christianity. And Christianity means Jesus tells us to go all in. And I want to share with you today what it means to go all in for Christ. What it means is I'm going to bet everything. Some of these people I met that were baptized today, I met with them yesterday. And, and I said, do you understand what it means to be baptized? It doesn't mean that you're just becoming a church member because church membership does not get you to heaven. It doesn't mean that you get a fire insurance to go to heaven. What it means is if you are baptized in Jesus' day, that means sometimes you may be excommunicated from your family, kicked out of the synagogue because you're going all in for Christ. And in today's society, sometimes it's easy to get baptized, it's easy to come to church, it's easy to read your Bible. But it's not easy to be devoted. It's not easy to stand up for Christ and say, I'm going to do what Christ wants me to do. Jesus told his disciples 12,000 years ago, if you follow me, I will give you the greatest reward of heaven. The greatest reward. I want to go all in. In your bulletin, if you write this quote down, and this is the whole premise of the entire series this month, Jesus who gave his all for us, wants us to give our all to Him. Our all. So often when we think about giving our all, we'll give what's comfortable, or we'll give what's left over, or we'll give what doesn't sacrifice or what does not hurt. But Jesus has asked us in our Christian faith to push our chips into life and say, trust in me. Not just work for me, not just to do things for me, but to go all in, which means everything I have, everything I do, everything I say, every action I perform, I am going all in, which the Bible says, die daily. 
It is not an easy concept to go all in. It's not an easy concept to be devoted for Christ. It means on an everyday basis, I have to decide, today, I'm going to take up my cross. Today, I'm going to decide in the morning, I'm going to pray. I'm going to honor God in my conversation, in my action, in my reaction. I'm going to do what Christ wants me to do. So the first point in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Then he said to them, if anyone desires to come after me, you must what? Deny yourself. If you're going to come after me, you're going to deny yourself. So let's look at that scripture, 923. The first phrase of that. Then he said to them all. He said to everyone. Not just the chosen selection. He chose everyone. He said, then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me. He said to everyone in the crowd, if you desire. That means not everybody's going to desire. Not everybody's going to follow after Christ. You can't look at somebody else's decision and say, I am better than them or I have a better desire than they do. He told everyone in the crowd, if you desire after me, which to me is crazy. I would say, since everyone desires to follow after Christ. But you know what? In the world today, not everybody is going to follow after Christ. Not everybody is going to serve Jesus Christ. Not everybody is going to be fully devoted unto Christ. It's going to be a select. It's going to be those that have a desire. A desire meaning an intense burning within your heart to do what God wants you to do. And sometimes, as Rachel told us earlier, sometimes we have to understand what we do not have before we understand what God wants us to have. Sometimes we have to be broken to a point that I do not know what to do. And when we are broken to not know what we need to do, Christ comes around us and He gives us an intense desire within our heart to follow after Him. I find it crazy that people do not want to follow after Christ. Any place, any time, no matter what your baggage is, Jesus says this, follow after me. Well, you don't know what I've done, Lord. Yes, I do. You don't know how bad I've sinned. Yes, I do. He says, no matter what you have, no matter where you've gone, no matter the sin that you've been in, Jesus says, if you have a desire after me, follow. And when he follows, what he does, he forgives. Jesus will accept anyone. Why wouldn't anybody want to follow Christ if they can gain one thing, and that one thing is forgiveness? You look at your sin. We all have our sin. You look at your sin, not somebody else's sin, and say, if only it would be forgiven. If only if it would have never happened. Jesus said, if you have a desire after me, follow, and he is going to forgive all of our sins. Let's look at verse 923 in its totality. He says, then he said to them, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Discipleship gets messy. All of me means none of you. All of you means none of me. Which means if I am going to be devoted follower of Christ, I have to say I am going to deny myself. Which means this is I've got to make some strong decisions. I got to be self aware in certain areas of my life. I have to be a follower of Christ, a student of Christ, if you would. To understand, if I do certain things, it's going to hinder my devotion to Christ. So I have to, on purpose, deny myself. I have to say no to certain things within my life that's going to keep me from being a follower of Christ. I was um, at my college reunion a couple of years ago, and I met one of my professors. His name was Dr. Lyles. And uh, Dr. Lyles, he, he knows me as a pastor now, and and I said, Dr. Lyles, I had you in class. I had you for soteriology, and I had you for pneumatology. And I was one of your students, and he just made a joke. And I thought it was really unique that he said this joke, and I, it fits my sermon today. He said, Bruce, he said, if I remember correctly, sometimes you attended my class, but you were not a student of mine. I said, what do you mean? He goes, Bruce, a student of mine learns from the teacher." And everything I heard about you, you haven't learned anything from me. And I thought that was so true today. 
Sometimes we attend church, but we're not a student of the teacher. Sometimes we enjoy coming to church and singing the songs and getting into the worship experience, but we're not learning from the teacher. We're not devoted. We may have checked our name and we may have come to church, but are we fully a student of the teacher? And the teacher is not me, the teacher is Jesus. We need to make a choice. It is the cost of going all in and following me, denying yourself and cashing everything in. Every thought about yourself, everything you are, all that you want to be or you hope to have. Hope to go places in your life and you need to go all in. We're our own worst enemy. We should say, Bruce, get out of the way. I need to deny myself because sometimes... I make stupid choices. Can you give me an amen? And you're preaching to yourself there, right? We make stupid choices. We wake up and we're not fully devoted. We do not deny ourselves. And sometimes the things that we do keep us from doing what God truly wants us to do. Am I going all in? Do I want to serve Jesus? Do I want to obey Jesus? Do I want to follow Jesus? Honor Jesus? If I want to do that, if I want to do... To deny myself and go all in, I have to be aware of, I have to make the sacrifices. I have to look at my sin, the sin that I indulge myself in, the sin that I enjoy, the things that, that are away from Christ that He will not allow me to be blessed in. I have to say, if I want to deny myself, I have to say no to certain things. Sometimes, as a preacher, I would be hypocritical if I tell you to do something that I do not do. If I would tell you to, to invite people to church, and I don't invite people to church. If I tell you to share your faith, but I do not share my faith. If I tell you to give up your sins, but I'm living in my sin. If I tell you to do something that I'm not willing to do, I become hypocritical. So what I want our church to do today is to go all in. To decide what we are going to do. Be self-aware of my sin and be self-aware of what we do not do that Christ wants us to do. Jesus said no. No, no, no. If you're going to deny yourself, you have to follow me. Above you, ahead of you, before you, and instead of you. If you're going to deny yourself, you're going to say this. Jesus is the highest priority in my life. You know, the funny thing is, we can sing all kinds of songs about Jesus being the priority. Jesus being the preeminent one. We can sing those songs when we're in church. We can sing those songs. We're in the car, but when the rubber hits the road, the songs that we sing are not the life that we live. And if we're going to be devoted followers of Christ, we shouldn't utter things out of our mouth that our life does not follow. All of you, instead of all of me. Deny. And then it says, die to yourself. Then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up your cross and follow me. If you're going to be a follower of Christ, you realize, number one, that Jesus Christ died on that cross for your sins and mine. The baptism that you receive does not remit, does not cause your sin to be gone. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all of our sins. And when you were a follower of Christ, just like in biblical days, that Jesus was not a popular person in biblical days, and when you gave your life to Jesus Christ and you said, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, then you are saying, I'm going to take up my cross and I'm going to follow me. And the, the symbol of the cross is death. We sometimes think, I'm going to put a cross around my neck. And I'm going to bear that cross. And I want everybody to know that I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. And that's a great thing. But in biblical days, you take up the cross means I am not ashamed that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I am not ashamed to stand up and proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, even if it is exile from my family, even if, it's, even if it's excommunication from the synagogue. I am going to stand up and say the cross that Jesus Christ died on, the blood that he shed was for me. I'm going to die to myself because the price that Jesus Christ paid for is the blood that he shed for your sins and mine. See, to go all in means I'm not going to live for today. To go all in means I'm going to live for eternity. And to go all in today means I've got to make proper choices. I need to be self-aware. 
to make sure that I do what Christ wants me to do. All Jesus asks us for is what he's done for us. Is he died for us. And he says, I died for you. Please, sacrifice for me. In Luke chapter 9, verses 21 through 22. And he strictly warned and commanded them to tell them to do no more. Saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and be raised the third day. In verse 24, For whoever deserve, desires to save his life shall lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake shall save it. In order to go to heaven, we have to realize that we can't get there on our own. We can't be good enough. We can't give enough. We can't be nice enough to get to heaven on our own. The Bible says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So in order to go to heaven, we must say no to ourselves. We must deny ourselves, and we must die to ourselves. Every one of us has a choice. You can use it. You can keep it to yourself. You can do whatever you want with it. But what we must do is we must understand, I can live for Bruce. Or I can live for Christ. And if I live for Bruce, I'm going to be miserable. Because Bruce makes a lot of mistakes. But Christ makes no mistakes. And what I must do in order to be a follower after Christ, to be a devoted follower after Christ, I must deny my desires. I must deny myself to say, I am first. I must sacrifice the things that sometimes I want instead of what Christ wants. And I must die to myself. In our popular culture today, it means this. It's not about secular humanism. It's not about me being good. It's not about me going to heaven. It's not matter what I do is good enough and God's going to look at me and say, you're better than somebody else. You're going to heaven. It's I'm going to die to myself and I'm going to let Christ work within me. You can live your life for you and you alone or eventually you will live your life for Christ. But see, every one of us one day is going to look at Christ and we're going to look at our life and we're going to say, I live my life for this, for this superficial life, but I could have had something great. See, there were 12 disciples. And in those 12 disciples, one man denied Christ. And then there were 11 disciples. And then they cast lots and they made the 12th disciple and the 12th disciple is Messiah. And in their 12 disciples, these men had to make a decision. They were scared. They could have cut and run. They could have hid and they could have ran. But they had to make a decision that the Lord, their God, the Jesus that they saw, the Jesus that they served, the Jesus that they followed for three and a half years, was the very Son of God. And they had to make a decision. Am I going to live for myself and go back to fishing, go back to being a tax collector, go back to being a tent maker, or am I going to be a devoted follower of Jesus Christ? And if those men would have left their devotion and went back to their life, we'd have never heard about Paul, Mark, John, James, and Peter. But because they became devoted followers of Jesus Christ, we heard that these 12 men turned the world upside down for the cause of Jesus Christ because they were not afraid to die. They were meant to live. If you keep your life, you're going to lose it. If you give your life, you will save it. In terminology, if you keep your life in your pocket and you do not put it on the table, you're going to lose the bet. If you empty your pockets and go all in, you're going to win the big prize. You might know what the big prize is. Eternity. You have a choice to make. And God has given to you a life. A life that you have. A choice that we make. And we have a choice. If anyone desires, which means if anybody wants to make the right choice, you have a choice. If anyone desires to follow after me, if anybody has a choice to say, I have my life, my chips, I want to put it on the table for Christ. Or you can say, no, I'm going to leave my chips in my pocket. I'm going to 
play another table or I'm going to live for somebody else. But Jesus, what you're asking me to do is too hard. It's not easy. And I do not know if I want to put all my chips on the table. Then you're not dying to self. In church, we are supposed to be a body of baptized believers, which means this, that Jesus Christ is preeminent. That means in the morning when you wake up, Jesus is the first person you think about. That means that you're going to pray, and that means you're going to read the Bible, and that means we're going to be fully devoted to Christ. No longer, no longer can we just wake up and hope everything goes great. If we're going to be devoted followers of Jesus Christ, it's a daily decision that we're going to follow after Christ. In 2018, what we have to do is, I want 2018 to be different than 2017. Somebody give me an amen to that. And in order to be different, we have to be different. We can't expect the same old, same old, and expect a different result. But what we can say is this. If I love Jesus, if I want to be devoted to Christ, if I want to be a follower, if I want to go all in for Christ, I'm the one that has to make the decision. If anyone, that means it's your choice. I want to put my chips on the table. I want to deny myself certain things. That means the sin that you have, we need to grow up. Kind of like a parent talking to a kid there, doesn't it? Grow up. Mature up a little bit. Say no to the things that are hurting you. Get to be an adult. In your Christian faith, we're no longer babies. The desire, the milk of the Word. Grow up and desire the sincere meat of the Word. Which means the meat can make me whole. It can grow me stronger. It can be who I want to be. And sometimes we as babies... We make stupid choices, and mom and daddy, oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. We pat pat on the back. It's, it's going to be okay. It's, Jesus does that for a while, but there gets to be a time in our spiritual life that Jesus says, grow up. Grow, go all in. Devote yourself. Desire me. Devote yourself to the ministry. And that is the third point. Devote yourself. Then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. Follow me. It doesn't mean this. This is what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. It means, what does Jesus want me to do today? A few years ago, I had the privilege of going to Cambodia. And uh, the Cambodian is the killing fields and there's landmines still all over the country of Cambodia. And you walk in Phnom Penh and you see uh, boys and girls, men and women with legs amputated and they're walking around because there's landmines all over the killing fields of Cambodia. And we were going to this remote village in Cambodia where the Vietnamese lived. And, and we had a tour guide. And there were like 12 of us pastors and we're going through this, this rice field. And he said this to us. And I'll never forget. When somebody says this to you, when you know there's landmines all around, he said, do exactly what I do. Go exactly where I go. Do not, for any reason, go away from where I go. Okay, so we, we're a bunch of pastors from America, and we're in Cambodia, and we know there's landmines all over the field. We, we see these people with amputees, and uh, guess what we did? We followed him exactly. Wherever he went, whatever step he took, we never said, oh, you know what, I think that's prettier over there. We, let's go, no, no. We didn't go our own way. There were 12 pastors, like little robots, doing exactly what our, what our tour guide said, because we knew I wanted to get to the other side. And Jesus is saying the same thing. If we're going to devote ourselves, we're going to be a learner, a disciple of Jesus Christ. We're going to be a student of Jesus. We're going to follow and devote ourselves to Christ. Follow me doesn't mean walking behind somebody. It means mimicking them, learning from them, doing what they ask you to do. You give up your rights, your wants, your ambitions, and your desires. If we are truly the body of Christ and we are the light of a dark world, 
We are ambassadors to one, and that is Jesus Christ. You and I do not have a say in the matter of what we do and what we say. When we gave our life to Christ, when we were baptized into God's family, when we identified ourselves to Christ, we are saying, I am a follower of Jesus. I am devoted to my Master. Whatever I need, whatever He tells me to do, I will do. In modern times, surrender means failure or means give up. Motivational speakers, they don't give up, don't give in. Winning is everything. That's what the motivational speakers will tell you. But let me tell you what Christ says. Jesus is the only way to victory. The Christian life through surrender. Surrender. Do you know why, in terminology of worship, do you know why people raise their hands in worship? They say, I surrender. I surrender my will to you. So here's somebody that doesn't understand music. I understand when people raise their hands in worship and say, I surrender. I want my my song and my heart to go up to Christ and I want Him to bless me. But the same person that surrenders his heart in worship on Sunday morning during the worship service is the same person that needs to surrender his heart on Monday morning when he wakes up to go to work. I surrender. This world is killing me. I cannot do this any longer, Lord. I make stupid choices. I say stupid things. Lord, I need to be self-aware. I need to wake up in the morning and I need to surrender this day. Not this week, not this year. I need to surrender this day. And there's times in our lives where we need to surrender this moment. We need to surrender this thought. We need to surrender this action and say, I can't do this on my own. I am a child of God. And that's the first thing that we have to decide. And I need to ask you a tough question. Are you a follower of Christ? I know for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I understand that when we're a child of God and we're going to heaven because of that. But John chapter 3, verse 16 is different than Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23 talks about a devoted follower of Christ. Not just somebody that's going to heaven. But somebody that wants Jesus Christ to radically change their life. Jim Elliott, a missionary, said this. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. I am going to give my life to Christ. Because when I give my life to Christ, I cannot lose. Are you all in? Anything stuck in your pocket? Have you bet the farm for Jesus? See, betting the farm, it just simply means that in the olden days, in the western days, is you're going to a poker table or a gambling hall, if you would, uh, which was a sin back in the day. But today it's really not that big of a deal unless you, you go crazy. Um, you sit at the table, and you get four of a kind, four aces or four kings. And you're sitting here, and you only have $300 in your pocket, but you know the guy across the table has $5,000 in his pocket. And you know that what you have is better than what he has. It's called no limit. So what you could do then is you could pull out your deed to your farm and you could sign over your farm and you could lay your farm on the table and you're saying, I am all in. I know that what I have is better than what you have. And after all the cards are played, you lay your hand on the table. And he lays his hand on the table. And you went all in. And you know when you went all in that you had a better hand. And you take his money and you put it in your pot. And what God wants to do within our life, he wants us to go all in. Because what God has given to you is better than this world has to offer to you. When you go all in, you're saying, I understand what other people have, but I know what I have. There was a wonderful illustration in history class, and I wonder if you remember 
You remember, understand, or Fernando Cortez? You remember Fernando Cortez? He landed in Mexico off Veracruz in 1519. Any history buffs in here? He unloaded all of his soldiers and all of his provisions. He got everybody on land and he told everybody to stand and look at the ocean. And he asked his officers to burn the ship. And the soldiers were astonished and they said, how would we ever get back? How would we ever get home? And he burned the boat. And he said this, we will either win this victory or we will die trying, but we will never, never retreat. And I believe that's what it means by going all in. As a child of God, if we are all in for Christ, our life behind us is over. The sin that we have played in is over. A life that we're dabbling in should be surrendered. We are moving forward for the cause of Jesus Christ. We will either die, but we will never retreat. My challenge to this church, to my church, is this. If we want to have victory in 2018, it's a spiritual victory. You cannot expect to have a physical victory, a mental victory, a relational victory, a home victory, until you first Deny yourself and say, Lord, I need you more than I need what I can do. The stuff that I have in my pocket is nothing, but what I can give to you is my life. And then you need to die to yourself, which means the stuff that I dabble in is not important. What I want to do is I want to deny myself and die for you. And you know, those two things are somewhat easy. I can deny certain things within my life, and I can fall on my face before God and say, Lord, I want to honor you in my life. But devoting yourself, waking up every morning and saying this, I want my life to be a glory and an honor to Jesus Christ. When I go to work, I want my boss to see that there's somebody different, there's something different about you than somebody else. That you're not working for a paycheck, you're working to honor Christ and you gain a paycheck. I want you to know, going all in is hard. It talks about devotion. It talks about being self-aware. It talks about growing up. I could just quit being a baby. As a child of God, as a Christian, as mature believers in Jesus Christ, God wants to do great things for you. And when we push our life all in and walk away from the table, there are no regrets. What Jesus does for the child of God that goes all in, just like he did for his disciples, he never promised his disciples it's going to be easy. It wasn't easy. Those men were crucified for the cause of Jesus Christ. But they knew that their life was like a vapor. It's here today. It's gone tomorrow. But the reward is Jesus. The reward is forgiveness. The reward is eternity. My challenge on the first Sunday of All In. You have a decision to make. I have a decision to make. Are there things within your life And this is between you and you alone. Between you and God. Not your spouse, not your family, not your kids. This is between you and God. Your family will see the difference when you make this choice. Can I deny myself? Can I deny myself of the sin, of the pride, of the anger, of the bitterness, of the frustration? And I deny myself of the things that are keeping me from God. You have to make that decision. The second thing is sometimes we are so arrogant in our own life that we don't think we need Christ. 
And the Bible says God will not exalt the proud or the arrogant. He only lifts up the humble and the meek. So what we must do is we must take away the pride from our life and say there's only one way that I can live my life pleasing to God and that's to humble myself before God. So we have to deny ourselves and we have to die to ourselves. And the hardest question and the one that most people will not do but we all should because we have to devote ourselves to the people. And Jesus has given us the Word of God whether you like it or not. It's still God's Word. There's a lot of things in the Bible. I wish this wasn't in there. I wish this wasn't in there. But it is. And it's God's holy Word. And you're not God. And you didn't write the book. You are ambassador to Christ. And when you're ambassador to Christ, the President of the United States gives you the policies and procedures for that country. And as an ambassador to that country, your job is to fulfill the wishes of of the president. And Jesus is our president. And we are his ambassadors. And if we are his ambassadors, he has given us the policies and procedures for our life. And we do not have the right to change his policies and his procedures. It's his. We are his. We are his ambassadors. We are his children. We are his chosen individuals. And if we are his chosen individual, this scripture means so much. Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow. Not set, not learn, but to move to follow. The challenge, church. Let's bring it up. Let's mature. Let's no longer be babies just drinking the milk of the Word of God. But let's grow to be mature believers of Jesus Christ. That leads us into the ambassadorship. I want to be His voice to His eyes, His ears. I want to grow. I want to learn. I want to be. I want Jesus to look at me and smile when He sees me following after Him. You have three choices today in your invitation. You have just to make this way to the front. I want you to be completely honest. This is classroom participation 101. You are a student. You're not a participant. You are a student, a learner of Christ. I'm going to ask you to be honest. Where do you need to deny? Is it pride, arrogance, substance? Where do you need to deny yourself because it's keeping you from following up? The pride that we have within our life, that my life is more important than Christ's life. Can we deny ourselves and can we die to ourselves? And then the mature step is this. Can I be devoted? Can I follow after Christ? When he says go, I need to go. Can you be a missionary to Wichita, to Hayesville, to Derby? Can you do what Christ wants us to do? An ambassador does what the leader tells him to do. And Jesus is telling us, deny ourselves, take up His cross, and follow my word. And if you can do that, Christ can give to you the rewards of the all-in bet. And the all-in bet says, your gain is heaven. Your gain is a relationship. Your gain is my blessing. You can't get it on your own, but you can get it through me. I want you to think about that. This month, it's all in. Let's start this year putting Jesus as the highest priority within our life.